today on Truths That Transform. The resurrection is the unassailable fortress of Christianity. Our relief work in Ukraine actually started a couple years ago. When the conflict started, we had this vision to send a million meals to Ukraine. As soon as they have their physical needs met, clothing, food, water, uh, medical attention, the first thing they ask for is Bibles. I'm Rob Pacienza, senior pastor of Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church, founded by Dr. D. James Kennedy. I want to wish you a happy Easter and welcome you to Truce the Transform, a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries, where we are standing for truth and defending your freedom. Easter Sunday is the most important day on the Christian calendar, and having grown up under Dr. Kennedy's ministry, it is an honor for me to join you this special day on the flagship program of the ministry that bears his name. On a Friday afternoon nearly 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ was nailed to a cross, died, and was buried. He was innocent, but he died as a criminal in my place and yours for our sins. And then on Sunday morning, he bodily rose again from the dead, proving himself to be the Son of God and securing victory over death itself. On today's program, we will investigate this extraordinary claim and tell you why you can know Christ rose from the dead. This good news has literally changed the world. And as we begin, we look at the ways the news of Jesus Christ is spreading, including in war-torn Ukraine. As we look upon world events today, especially with the conflict between Ukraine and Russia, it might be hard to see God's hand at work. But it's vital to remember that Jesus died and rose again for those of every nation, tribe, and tongue. Bob Burkle is the president of Eastern European Mission. Established in 1961, EEM provides Bibles and biblical literature to nations of the former communist bloc. Our motto is the Bible. We want everyone to get it. In the English-speaking language, there's double meaning to that. We want to physically give people a Bible, and then what we want you to do is read it and get it in your head, and then get it in your heart, and then go forward and uh, um, repeat with others as well. With the common perception that these former Soviet republics are thoroughly atheistic, one might think that this goal of spreading the Word of God could be hard to accomplish in this region. That's a myth that people thought that the actual countries were atheistic. The leadership was atheistic, but the people were not. They hungered for the Bible. About six or seven years ago, I had the opportunity to meet with one of the ministers of uh, religion in the Donbass region, which, which now is under um, control from another power. And, and at that point in time, we asked if we could bring the Bibles into schools. And they said, yes. And I was a bit surprised and I said, please don't get this wrong, but why did you say yes? And they said, we looked at uh, secular humanism in, in Western Europe, which is no God, we, we rejected that. We looked at Islam, that's a God of hate, we reject that. We looked at Christianity, a God of love, that's what's best for our people, and that's why we want to have the Bible taught in our schools. So from that initial opportunity for us to bring put Bibles in public schools in one region, we've expanded to where we have three quarters of the public schools in Ukraine have Bibles, and they teach and use them every day in their classrooms. And why are these Bibles so important for these children? The easiest way to answer that is hope. Uh, under the communist regime, you had no hope. But having the Bible, you get to see hope. You get to see uh, the promise that God has made that, that there is something better.
As the Word of God has been distributed and taught in the Ukrainian schools, there have been noted changes. We have found that the uh, Bible actually is changing how academics and academic scores are, are being recorded in Ukraine. At one point in time when the new regime came in in Ukraine, uh, the Minister of Education was asked by the President, as I look through this data, I see various regions in Ukraine that certain areas, is, the test scores are up, the discipline problems are down, but I don't understand it. I don't see any correlation in these regions all over the country. Why, why here, 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 and here? And then the uh, Minister of Education said, well, that's where the Bible is, and that's where the Bible's being taught. And the President said, well, well, why don't we do that in all our school regions in the entire country of Ukraine? Typically, the regions that we're in, they don't have a lot of money, and it could be that a Bible would cost the equivalent of, say, for example, one month's wages, and they just simply can't afford that. And, and so by getting God's Word, the Bible in there, um, it, it's, it gives them that, that lifeblood and hope. And, and we, we provide Bibles to individuals, to churches, to hospitals, to orphanages, um, anywhere people want it. As the Russian invasion of Ukraine loomed, Bob Burkle says the people there were asking for Bibles. Uh, a week before, uh, we had over 137 schools say, yeah, why don't you bring this in? This is important. We need to know this, and, and, and we need to know God, know what He says, and, and uh, ask for Him to be with us, provide protection, guidance, and, and again, that ultimate hope that we all have that are Christians that we know someday will be with God in heaven. As the war began disrupting the lives of the Ukrainian people, a wave of refugees into the millions began leaving their homes, creating a need to provide food for them. Another Christian organization, Intercessors for America, saw the need and were moved to act. David Kubal is their president. When the conflict started, we had this vision to send a million meals to Ukraine. And with God's grace and God's vision and, and God's direction with a number of different ministries in a collaborative effort, we saw a million meals sent to Poland and then across the border into the Ukraine and distributed. The beauty of this relief effort is we're utilizing the church in order to meet the needs of the people. Our relief work in Ukraine actually started a couple of years ago. We were approached by a couple of different men in Ukraine and they wanted to start Intercessors for Ukraine and they believe that their country is unique and special. And shouldn't they? I mean, God created that country also. And, and just like uh, the Ukrainian people, we believe and are wanting and praying for revival and awakening here in the United States. And that's just exactly what the Ukrainian people are doing too. Intercessors for Ukraine have been praying for for a number of years for an awakening and revival in their country. Regardless of what it takes in order for that to happen, that's what they've been praying for. And so this is providing an opportunity for uh, a great spiritual awakening to occur as people reach out to God and reach out to the church to see their needs met. Well, uh, from what I've seen, the Christians are emulating Christ. And by that I mean they're showing love. And they're showing love for their fellow uh, citizen, uh, whether they uh, profess to be Christian, uh, or whatever they, they acknowledge, they're saying uh, that, that this is what God asks of us and they give whatever they have and do whatever they can in order to try to protect and uplift their citizens. And what we're finding now is with the um, refugees having to migrate primarily through Poland but through the other boarding countries as well, as soon as they have their physical needs met, clothing, food, water, uh, medical attention, the first thing they ask for is Bibles. And so we right now are, are working as hard and as fast as we can to make Ukrainian Bibles, Russian Bibles, and, and other kind of Bibles and biblical literature in order to be able to satisfy that spiritual hunger they have now that their physical needs have been met. The attitude is that they understand that God's in control. They may not understand why, they may not understand uh, the suffering and, and everything else, but, but those who read the Bible and understand it, understand there will be suffering, there will be hardships, there will be other things. And so what they need to do is live a, a godly Christian life, and, and that's what they're doing uh, in their lives and, and trying to show that to others.
While the Ukraine situation is dominating the news cycle, there are also other refugees who have been greatly impacted by Eastern European mission. One of the interesting notes is that our fastest growing language that we support in Eastern Europe is Farsi and Arabic because the refugee crisis that was back in 2015 and 2016 has brought a flood of refugees to us and so we're finding these people that have come out of the Middle East had uh, dreams and visions and, and, and looking towards uh, this, this person called Jesus and so we've been able to to meet those needs, teach those people, and uh, many of them have been converted and, uh, into Christianity. And as they've gone up the, Christ, uh, up the refugee highway, they've actually revitalized the church in Western Europe. The idea of a truly loving God is not something that's familiar to someone who comes from a nation where Islam is dominant. So when Christians care for them and provide for their needs, they often want to know about Jesus Christ. They have a zeal and a hunger because they see why it's important to have a loving God and, and how, this, how God can work in their lives. Truths That Transform will return in 30 seconds. In a world where all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and the wages of sin is death, God's plan is astonishing. What's so amazing about grace? Find out in this free booklet that we'll send at no cost or obligation to you. Just call or write to us asking for What's So Amazing About Grace to help you grasp the most astounding of God's works, His grace for you. In a world of sin, tragedy is all around us. But as we see in Ukraine and so many other places, the good news of Jesus Christ transcends our circumstances and gives us everlasting hope for peace and eternal life. Why? Because Jesus Christ rose from the dead. That is an extraordinary claim, but it's a true fact of history that you can stake your life on. My mentor and pastor, Dr. D. James Kennedy, shares more on this portion of his message, How I Know Christ Rose from the Dead. The adherents of most of the great religions of the world can take their friends to a certain place and say with some, I believe, misguided pride that here is the grave of our great founder. This Christians cannot do because the tomb is empty and Jesus is not there. He has risen from the dead. Today I would like to speak to you on the subject how I know that Christ rose from the dead. And this is one of the most important things that we can ever know in this world. And I'd like to quickly mention three reasons why it's important. It's important because this is the foundation of our faith. With the resurrection stands or falls the Christian religion. As Paul said, if Christ be not raised, we are of all men most miserable. We are yet in our sins. Secondly, it is the resurrection to which we can repair in times of doubt and trial. When it may seem that other things are going wrong and questions come into our mind, we can always go to the resurrection, flee there to that great Gibraltar of our faith and find solace for our souls in the certainty of our salvation rested upon the many infallible proofs that Christ has given of his resurrection life. And thirdly, because it's the most powerful weapon in the arsenal of the Christian soldier, those who would be effective witnesses for Christ need to realize that the resurrection is the unassailable fortress of Christianity. And all of the efforts of all of the skeptics down through the centuries have utterly failed to even put a dent in it. To give you some idea of how solid and certain 
is the evidence for the resurrection, let me just give you my conclusion first. Many people believe that Christianity is based upon legends or myths or uncertainties and things that we really don't know about and the wish is really father of the thought and that these all disappear into the mists of time and there's no real solid evidence for it at all. Well, they could not possibly be more mistaken. My friends, if the resurrection of Christ be not true, then we don't know anything about anything in all of the history of the world. Because this is the best proved single fact of all. Well, let me, this morning, list just a few of the evidences for the resurrection, some that you may never have thought of before. The first evidence that you may never have thought about for the resurrection is this, you. That you are here is a great evidence for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That you are here as a part of the Church of Jesus Christ. One billion six hundred million people in this world today are part of that church. It is the largest institution that exists or ever has existed on planet Earth. But for the moment, I'm simply trying to impress upon you that the Church of Jesus Christ, this grand canyon of institutions, was created by the preaching of the resurrection from the dead. In fact, the apostles were chosen as those who were eyewitnesses to the resurrected Christ. Now, every effect must have an adequate cause to explain it. And secondly, that you are here today and not yesterday. I'm speaking of the tremendous change that took place in the day of the Sabbath. The first century Jews were fanatical Sabbatarians. They would stone a person to death for carrying a stick on the Sabbath. And on several occasions they tried to kill Jesus for healing someone on the Sabbath. The early church was made up almost entirely of Jews. How is it that these fanatical Sabbatarians were willing to abandon their century-old belief in the seventh-day Sabbath and begin to worship and rest and glorify God and to have all of their church activities on the first day of the week and not the seventh? There is only one explanation It is given by the apostles themselves and their followers, and that is because on the first day of the week, Jesus Christ rose from the dead. So here we have this tremendous institution of the Christian Sabbath as a second evidence for the resurrection. The seventh day Sabbath was given, as you may recall, as a memorial For on the seventh day the Lord rested from the creation of the heavens and the earth, the physical universe. The first day Sabbath is a memorial of the creation of the new heavens and the new earth, of the kingdom of God, which was ushered in by the resurrection of Christ from the dead. The third evidence that I would like to set before you is the fact of the empty tomb. Here is a rock upon which may be dashed to pieces all manner of doubts. Now let me say that it is very clear, the entire testimony of antiquity is clear that the tomb of Jesus Christ was empty. The fourth evidence that I would mention is the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus. At least 10 times, Jesus appeared before his ascension Afterward, he appeared again to Paul and to John on the island of Patmos. But at least 10 times after the resurrection and before the ascension, Jesus appeared. 
He appeared to one, or to two, or to three, or to eight, or to 11, or to 500 people at one time, numerous appearances. You need to remember that after the death of Jesus, what was the state of the apostolic band? They were totally demoralized. They were totally dejected. They were filled with fear. They locked themselves in an upper room for fear of the Jews. And then suddenly, apparently without any natural explanation, this group of frightened little rabbits turned into bold proclaimers of the resurrected Christ who could stand before the Sanhedrin itself and declare unto them, thus saith the Lord, and this is what God has done. Jesus Christ is alive and the ultimate test of that is when you invite him to walk not only out of the tomb, but into your heart and to transform the deadness of your life into the glorious resurrection life that he can give, that eternal never-ending life that only Christ can bestow upon those who will receive him and trust in him. Won't you, if you have never, invite him into your heart today? Come, thou risen Christ, thou conqueror of the grave, thou that didst die for me, come and cleanse me for my sins and grant me eternal life. And you will know most assuredly, not only intellectually, but also experientially, that Jesus Christ arose and is alive because he is alive in you. May we pray. Father, we thank thee for the glorious fact of the resurrection of Christ, that we do not follow cunningly devised fables or myths, but certainties and facts. We thank thee, O Christ, that for us thou didst die and for us thou didst rise again. And Lord, if there is anyone here who does not know him personally, I pray that you would move them by your spirit to say, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay. In his name, amen. I'm Jennifer Kennedy Cassidy, and as you just heard from my father, Dr. D. James Kennedy, the resurrection of Jesus Christ isn't just some comforting story or a fairy tale myth. It's rock solid historical fact. It's the central fact that gives meaning to all of life and that gives us hope for the future. If Jesus did not rise, then our future only holds death and the grave. But because Jesus overcame death, he can save you and me too. My dad loved proclaiming this truth, which he built his own life upon. That's why he co-wrote the book, Who Is This Jesus, Is He Risen? with Dr. Jerry Newcomb. And we'd like to send it to you as our thanks for your generous donation to the ongoing work of this ministry. Discover for yourself why the resurrection of Jesus is a historical fact. This book guides you through the maze of the theories that skeptics offer up to explain away the resurrection of Jesus and shows you why they're wrong. And if you are able to give a generous donation of $60 or more, we'll send you the book plus the DVD version of our brand new documentary special, Who Is This Jesus? Is He the Only Way? Our team has been hard at work over the past year crafting this program, which features experts, scholars, and pastors like Michael Youssef, Erwin Lutzer, H.B. Charles, and many more. In recent decades, the biblical accounts of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection have been under assault from skeptical scholars. But in this special program, you'll discover why the New Testament documents are the most reliable documents from all of antiquity. You'll see why only the bodily resurrection of Jesus fits the facts of the case. And you'll learn why the culture's view that all roads lead to God is wrong and that we can only be saved by the Jesus Christ of the New Testament. That's the book, Who Is This Jesus? Is He Risen? by Dr. D. James Kennedy and Dr. Jerry Newcomb. And the book, plus the powerful new documentary on DVD, Who Is This Jesus? Is He the Only Way? as our thanks for your donation of $60 or more.
And as you give, you'll be helping us to produce and air more high quality programming like this, proclaiming the gospel and defending the truth of the Bible. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339. Or call toll free 877-962-7677. Or go online to djkm.org. I became a believer in Jesus as a teenager under the ministry of Dr. Kennedy, whose clear, logical, and biblical explanation of truth broke through my unbelief. And now as the senior pastor of the church he founded, I share Dr. Kennedy's desire to equip God's people to share and defend their faith. You have seen on today's program the persuasive evidence for the historical claim that Jesus Christ did indeed rise from the dead in his body on that first Sunday 2,000 years ago. And you have seen how that message is proclaimed in places under siege like Ukraine and places more ordinary like here in South Florida. In both cases, people go out and share the message because they have encountered a living Jesus who has transformed them. So what does that mean for you? Are you currently sharing your faith? It could be that you need to bolster your confidence in your faith by understanding the evidences that prove that the New Testament is reliable and true. Or it could be that you need some help, some training, to learn how to start spiritual conversations. If so, I'd urge you to speak to your pastor or find a church where evangelism explosion training is offered. But whatever it is, don't keep the good news to yourself. People are dying every day without God and without hope in the world. Jesus himself told us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That is the best possible news, and God has given us some instructions on what we as believers are supposed to do with it. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. And he is with us to the end of the age because he is risen. He is risen indeed. D. James Kennedy Ministries is standing for truth and defending your freedom. I'm Pastor Rob Pacienza. Thank you for being with us and happy Easter. Here's a look at the next Truths That Transform. All by myself on the 50, after the game was over, no kids on the field, I took a knee for, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds, and uh, just continued on with the team, and they ended up suspending me. That's next week. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.